first he became aware that there was a thought system deceiving me, the ego's thought system. Like, it was very hard to, to listen and follow. So I had to say yes over and over and over. And so there seems to be like a progression towards learning to listen and follow. And I feel like until that's complete, like until like it's become very, very clear hearing the spirit, that like even the deceptive thought system will get in and try and use that to its advantage. And like even say, oh, but I should be able to hear by now. You know, I've done this, I've practiced this enough, I've done enough mind training, I, I shouldn't be still at that stage where I can't hear spirit at all. And so, between that deception or that twisting of the idea of listening and following, and the idea in my mind that somehow I should be happy no matter where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm with, like I should just be able to be happy, like a combination of those things, it's it's like, it seems to be very, it's like quicksand. It's almost like, like the more I struggle to get out, the, the deeper I, I sink. And so, yeah, I guess, like, I, I think I hear what you're saying about, you know, where there's, where there's a place like this where people have gone before, that it can be helpful to trust and to listen. I guess what I'm, what I'm really wondering is like how to get out of the quicksand without struggle. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a very good question, very subtle too. Uh, I have found that the best examples of, of how to do that are, are the trusting ones. And I use that example uh, like with Francis, we were down, Jason and I were down in, um, down in Sydney and we were visiting at her house and um, Francis said, well, we don't really have a lot of groceries here, I need to go out and Jason said, okay, I'll go with you. So they took a car and they went out to the grocery store. Francis was just, you know, like those old stories about, you know, about the Indian stories about um, the master dunking the the devotee his under the water and then again and then until finally you know after five minutes of this the devotee comes up <gasps> you know just <laughs> gasping trying to get some air in the lungs and then that's the master's answer when you want enlightenment as much as you wanted that next breath you'll know it <laughs> that was the Indian story well, Frances was basically on the trip to the grocery store. She's like, okay, let's cut the chase. What's it going to take? I want to know. Just give it to me straight. And he said, well, let's trust. It's the, that's the key. The whole key is trust. And she's like, trust who? Trust what? And, you know, let's really kind of like zoom in and let's get to the, get the chase. And, and, it was, and Jason very calmly said, just trust David and trust me. You know, it was, didn't pause and came right out. And, and really, that's the thing that if you really went out of the quicksand without the struggle, all the analysis, all of the, all the things that the ego would say is what makes the struggle. It makes you move and strive in the quicksand and then sink deeper. And it reminds me of a scene in the Matrix movie, the Matrix first movie, where... Um, Basically, Neo knows he needs help, and this guy comes to his office, and it's got a delivery, one of those deliveries, um, and he just, he says, have a, have a nice day, and Neo gives him a look, like, who are you, and what is this, and opens it up, and there's a phone in there, and it, it immediately pops open and rings, and it's Morpheus. And Morpheus quickly says to him, I can guide you, but you must do exactly as I say. And he goes, what? Now, he says, stand up, do it slowly, and then begins the, the, the very clear instructions from Morpheus to Neo right there in the office where he's working, you know, which is a great symbol of being caught up in the, 
ways of the world, but with the Spirit coming, zooming in right there on the phone with clear voice, clear reception, and, and of course in that scene he, he's able to trust and lower down and, and make it out to the, the kind of the window, the veranda in the back, and you know, there's a, a there's a, like a scaffolding, you can use it to get to the roof. What? I didn't do it. You know, then, <laughs> then the ego really kicks in and he's, he's looking down no way, you know, he's, he goes through the whole thing, you can see the ego, it got so far and then it's like, no, I'm not going to, and then, and basically Morpheus says, I leave it to you, and then click, so he's given him the instructions and then he's, he's either got to follow the instructions or not and face the consequences and he's, he's too scared to, his, his, his phone blows out of his hand even, so that's kind of a symbol of like, I don't want that kind of guidance, it's too, too threatening, but I, I think that, that that's the way out of the quicksand is, is a sense of trust. I mean, with Jesus and the Apostles, uh, they really, we know in retrospect, they all had good reason to trust Him because we have this experience that He was the way, the truth, and the life and that everything that He would lead them for or guide them for was for their own best interest. So he would be unwise, any one of them would have been unwise, you know, to, to not follow him. But we also know that they went through all these trials and tribulations, so much so that even after three years of living with the guy, that as soon as he got arrested, they all locked themselves up in the, in the upper room, terrified, bolting the door. After all those teachings about the kingdom of heaven, and then, of course, when Jesus is crucified, he doesn't even appear first to them. He appears to Mary, Mary Magdala, because she was more ready to see him than the twelve apostles that he spent three years with. So, you know, it shows you how deep this goes, and and what willingness it takes, and what readiness it takes. But, but the short answer is trust. If you if you really would like to kind of come out of the quicksand, you know. You shall know them by their fruits and trust. If you put those together, it can save you countless years of, of thrusting around in the quicksand and seeming to go down deeper instead of, of getting out. And uh, yeah, that's why, like with Francis, over these last few years or whatever, it's like, sometimes I've joked, if you had like encyclopedia that had spiritual awakening, a little picture of Francis there because she's, she was just so willing in such a short period of time to let go of things that people wouldn't, people go decades without even contemplating facing, looking at, letting go. But, but the desire and the willingness and the trust, if you put those together, it's, it's a powerful combination. It's, it's not so much a matter of time, it's more a matter of, uh, of willingness and readiness. You do have to be ready. Even if you're willing and nothing's happening, you feel like your wheels are spinning. It just means that you're somewhere deep down, you know, you're not ready. But, but that will come as well. <laughs>